Hello, my name is Dr. Allie Baumgartner and I am the Paleontology Collections Manager here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. And though my day job is taking care of fossil animals, my first love is plants. So today I'm going to be telling you about what is a herbarium? So right now we are in the Elam Bartholomew uh, Herbarium here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. It is named for Elam ba Bartholomew, who was a uh, former curator of the museum in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and he studied fungi. So our herbarium is relatively small, has about 10,000 fungi specimens, as well as over 48 thousand botanical specimens, most of which are from flowering plants of the Great Plains in Kansas. So, like I said, what is a herbarium? So simply put, it is a plant library. So it is a collection of botanical material that has been preserved for research and posterity. And you probably think of leaves when you think of preserving plant parts, but it's much more than that. Um, botanists will collect twigs and bark and buds, as well as fruits and flowers and seeds whenever possible. So these materials will be pressed and dried. And if they are prepared properly and properly maintained, they can last for a very long time. And when you think of preserved plant bits, you're probably thinking of leaves, and that is the easiest thing to preserve, and they are very common. Leaves are everywhere, but they're not necessarily the best way to identify a plant. So whenever possible, it is important to collect fruits and seeds and flowers, but those are less ab available and less abundant. <sighs> I don't remember what comes next. <laughs> okay, but they are less abundant. So, what do we do with this? What use is a herbarium? So lots of different people can use a herbarium. Botanists use it to describe new species. Paleobotanists use it to understand how modern plants work so they can understand fossil plants. Ecologists or conservation biologists might come in to understand the plants of a particular region. So it's really important to understand what is preserved in a herbarium. So a herbarium has all sorts of different things. You have pressed plant specimens that are preserved in folders like this. In some collections, you may also have spirit collections or wet collections where specimens are preserved in jars. This is especially good with fruits, that, so they can be preserved in three dimensions. Some larger collections also have DNA collections where the DNA samples have been extracted from the plant material before they're pressed. We're a relatively small herbarium, so all we have are what you see here. So it's important to understand how it is arranged. So there are a couple of different ways that you can arrange a herbarium. You can do it taxonomically or the way we do it, alphabetically. If you're doing it taxonomically, that means that more closely related groups are going to be closer together in cabinets. However, plant taxonomy is constantly being updated, so it can be difficult to be constantly moving your collections as the systematics are updated. So that means that sometimes, especially in very large collections, you may be using a taxonomy that's slightly out of date. Another way to get around this is by relying on the alphabet. So that means that even though our um, plants are not necessarily grouped by their closest relatives, it means that someone who may not be as familiar with the taxonomy can quickly find what they're looking for. So we group all of the different types of plants together though. So for example, all of the mosses are together, all of the ferns, are together, all of the conifers are together, and then monocots are together, and then dicots are together. So they are arranged alphabetically um, within these different groups. So I'll give you an example of what that might look like in a cabinet. So behind me, this 
is the cabinet, one of the cabinets for the family rosacee. So rosacee um, includes plums and peaches and cherries. A lot of the common uh, fruits that you see, a lot of them come from rosacee. So if you look inside here, you'll see lots of folders, lots of different colors. So even though this may look like a book, it's important not to, to turn the different sheets like pages of a book. In order to preserve the sheets for long-term storage, it's important to always have the specimens upright with the specimen facing up. Never flip them upside down. Don't hold them straight up. So, like I said, there are multiple different colors, and the color tells you what's inside. So, on the outside, you will see the name of the family and the name of the genus. So, the genus is basically um, a group of closely related species. So, prunus here is the genus that includes um, cherries and plums and peaches and almonds, for example. So, in the folders, that have either this red edge or are completely red. These are specimens that have been um, collected in Ellis County, Kansas. Within the folder, the species are arranged in alphabetical order. The green folders include anything that was collected in Kansas outside of Ellis County. And again, the species are arranged in alphabetical order within the folder. And then finally, you have these white folders. These are for specimens that were found anywhere other than Kansas. So depending on the herbarium that you go to, they may use different types of organization. But because our herbarium is relatively small and most of our collections are relatively local, this uh, level of detail works really well for us. So what is the future of a herbarium? This seems kind of old-fashioned, right? Having all of these pages of fruits and flowers and leaves pressed like pages of a book. And to be honest, many collections are moving towards digitizing all of their specimens, which is great, especially now when it is very difficult for people to actually travel to do research. And I personally benefited from using digital specimens. Um, I was able to do a lot of my dissertation research by looking at pictures of, of modern leaves that were available online. But not everything in botany can be done from a picture. So we can't just toss out our collections once we've taken a picture. Think about DNA. That wasn't something that we were able to extract until relatively recently. And a lot of herbaria do not have DNA collections. So just because all of these things may be photographed and available online, that doesn't mean that there's no more use for a herbarium. So once COVID is gone and we can safely travel again, I do recommend getting in contact with your local herbarium and figuring out how you can help and if you can come visit. So thank you. I hope that this gives you a renewed appreciation for plants and their importance. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.